Hi, I'm Britt Carr. I'm the creative director for Advanced Authoring. I wanted to demo an interaction that I made at Miami University. Uh, this is a sewing tutorial for a costuming design class in the theater department at Miami. This is a photorealistic 3D sewing machine made in Flash and allows the students to practice performing the procedures that are required for the safety portion of the class. And I should say, that this project file was actually reused about a year later uh, for a stage lighting safety tutorial. Uh, the faculty asked for an online tutorial that would help the students pass a required safety exam before they could actually start using the machines. The costume shop at Miami, it's only got about three or four machines and those are in use most of the time actually making costumes for the upcoming performances. So it was difficult for her students to actually get time scheduled on the machines to do the hands-on practice. With the scheduling bottleneck, it was taking about 40 students somewhere around a month to get up to speed enough to pass the safety exam. So she needed to compress that time to down, down to the first week of class. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch this activity. And when I do, the objectives come up. Um, the students are going to be required to know the critical parts of the sewing machine. Then they need to uh, learn how to thread a bobbin how to load the bobbin into the machine, and then how to actually thread the machine. Um, we can start things out with a parts list. Uh, the student can actually just take their mouse and roll over the particular part, and it actually highlights it on the machine. They can actually click on it to see a close-up, and also to see a description of the function, or uh, in the case of moving parts, they can actually see a little animation of how that actually moves. Next, they're going to need to take a parts quiz. Uh, now here, what they have to do is actually choose the part based on its function rather than its name. So it's important for them to go through and actually look at that parts list and look at all the functions. Now I'm going to go ahead and start this. Um, first question, which part keeps proper tension on the thread? Now I know that that area is right here, so I'm going to click on it and then I get question number two. Um, once the bobbin has um, been wound, where do I load it? Well, I know that it goes right there, but if I pick the wrong area, I get some immediate feedback. I actually sew my finger. If I sew my finger two or three times, a dialogue window will come up and actually suggest that I might want to go over the parts list again uh, and get a little bit more practice. Uh, the third part of the tutorial is watching uh, the video. This is an exemplar video that the faculty made that shows the students all the steps that they're going to need to perform. And uh, we made this in the format so that it could actually be downloaded onto a student's iPod so that they could actually use that as a job aid when they were doing the hands-on part. And uh, here we can actually just play through. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just kind of fast forward through this a little bit so that we can see the um, what the, the students actually are going full, to be seeing. Stop and you want to make sure that it is uh, but then after the students watch the video, then they have a chance to actually try it themselves. So here we have to actually wind the bobbin uh, and we can actually do this by clicking on the bobbin area and it launches a little uh, interactive virtual sewing machine with some virtual thread. Now uh, down at the bottom of this are some prompts to tell students the next step to do. So what they have to do is bring their mouse around this area right here and then they have to come back over here to thread the bobbin. And they have to put the thread in the top hole and then they have to move the bobbin down onto the spindle, click it in place, hold the string up high and then they can press their mouse to actually start winding the bobbin. Once it's wound they can actually click it to release, they go get their scissors and then they can cut it free. The next step requires the student to actually thread the machine and I've only got about 30 seconds to show this so I'm going to kind of bounce through it really quickly. What they have to do is come down here, around, they have to follow the prompts, then they have to actually open the machine and once they open it they can wind the thread around uh, the take up lever down and thread the needle. 